trapped by this workbench. Day 4,000 something. I don't even know what year it is. For the in-stretcher mortises, I put the new Shop Fox mortising machine to work. This thing was the way to go. Here was cutting up the end stretchers. These went by pretty fast. And I was able to cut the legs down to size, or at least a little proud. This part was one of those measure three times cut once scenarios. I knew if I messed this up, I didn't have any more ash that was dried. I'd either have to dry some, use another material, or try to source it from elsewhere. And I really wanted to only use lumber from the yard. I had actually made this jig a while back for something else. It came in kind of handy here. Rather than tilting the bed for the saw, I just put this fixture in there and went ahead and cut these 45s on here. Some things are just meant for a handsaw, and this is absolutely one of those things. I couldn't imagine hitting this with a power tool. I pre-drilled these holes with a Forstner bit. It made it a little easier to drill through with the mortising machine. I didn't make any super big tenons for the top support on the ends. Since I planned to mechanically attach the top to these, there was really no way this thing was going to rack enough to knock anything loose. With my drill press being in a weird state of being somewhere between death and the afterlife, I had to come up with a pretty crafty idea for this to make sure this thing was square. Probably wasn't my brightest idea, but it worked. So I decided to use a 25 millimeter hardened shaft for the bottom here. I drilled the leg out and put a linear ball bearing in it.
I made a template so I could drill the dowel holes. After checking out the different ways people attach the legs on these things, I decided to offset my inside hole by a sixteenth of an inch. That way once the dowels were hammered in, the joint would stay tight. This is where it started to get pretty exciting because you could actually see it coming together. This next section for me was kind of a hurry up and wait scenario. I drilled dowel holes, put on glue, and put on a bunch of clamps. Wash, rinse, repeat. I get a lot of use out of these side cutters in the shop, whether it be trimming dowel rods or just flush cutting any random something. They were my go-to tool when I used to build vinyl specialty windows, so they kind of got a second life flush cutting stuff in the shop. When I realized all the modifications I made to the table were going to leave me not having enough ash for it, so I decided to go grab some of the chinkapin oak boards that I had dried. And rather than cut these down on a regular bandsaw, I just went out to the sawmill and cut the edges because they were in slabs and it just made it so much easier. I decided I wanted to give the bench a little flare by making the dead man the exact opposite of the vice itself. So I took that angle and then flipped it upside down basically and made this. Since I had to sacrifice some of the thickness in the top, I decided that rather than route the slot in, I'd just add a piece underneath and make it where the dead man just kind of screwed on and attached over it. I did the dead man, the leg vise, and the track itself in bold linseed oil. I kind of wanted this to have a different look to it than the rest of the table.
cut it the best I could, but of course it didn't go all the way through. I wound up cleaning it up a little bit with the Sawzall. Mother truck. I could have used a hand plane on this, but at this point, I'd been working on this thing on and off for two months, and man, I was ready to be done. As for the rest of the bench, I just used Danish oil on it. I needed something to hold that linear bearing in at the bottom, so I painted some screws up and cut a piece on the CNC. As for the handle, I just used some ash I had laying around and I just happened to have a walnut dowel the right size, so I didn't really put any bells and whistles on this thing. I made it to where if I want to take it apart and put something fancy on there later, I can do that. But right now, I just needed it functional. It was nice to get done with this project. I can't wait to use it and do some future projects with it. This video was long and pretty painful to make in Premiere Elements. So if there's any discrepancies, uh, blame it on that. As usual, if you've made it this far in the video, like and subscribe.